looking into the camera? Yeah, you are. Yeah. <laughs> okay. We're actually live right now. Woohoo. <laughs> yeah. Animus legend. You yeah, here, here I am. <laughs> So, um, so Jay, I want to, um, you know, thank you for joining me today. And actually, let me just give a little perspective, if I could, at first. Um, uh, you know, first off, I'm, my name is Bob Jennis. I am a local real estate agent here in the Pascack Valley. I'm also a resident of Westwood. And, um, you know, with this challenging year that we've had with COVID and everything else, it's, it's um, earlier this year, I did some interviews with some folks, local businesses and politicians and um, use this venue as just to give some exposure to people because, you know, it's just been such a crazy year. So we, we thought, hey, you know, this could be a really good opportunity for the upcoming Board of, Can Board of Ed candidates, um, the actual election for the Westwood Regional School District. We thought, hey, you know what, let's, let's do some interviews with folks who want to take advantage of this. And um, so here we are. So that's why we're here. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate the opportunity. So thanks. that makes sense, right? So, <laughs> so basically, um, just to give some further perspective, what I'm going to be doing is um, those folks who actually wanted to um, do this, right? It's an opportunity for them to do that. We have a, a few people running for this this seat, the Board of Ed seat, and um, you know, I'll be having some other interviews as we go throughout the week and over the weekend as well. So I think I have about four or five lined up. So um, what I wanted to do was just introduce Jay Garcia. Jay Garcia is one of those folks who is running for the Board of Ed seat. So what's up, Jay? How are you? <laughs> yeah, and thank you so much for the opportunity. Absolutely, absolutely. So, uh, you know, thank you for joining me today. You know, we have our time together. And just to, again, to give a little bit more perspective, um, those candidates that are doing this, I've given some questions ahead of time. Everyone's kind of gotten the same questions. Um, but I really like to keep this conversational because I think what's important is that People get to know who you are. Um, you know, we're seeing the signs out on people's lawns and all that kind of stuff and Facebook posts. But um, with COVID, it's been kind of a challenge. We can't get together necessarily. So that's why we're doing it this way. So I think it's important that people get to know who you are and get to know all the candidates, which is why we're doing this today. So what I'd love for you to do, Jay, if you could, um, just to kind of start us off, could you give us some perspective? Like, why don't you just introduce yourself? And, uh, you know, how long have you lived in the area? What's, what's, uh, what are the things you do in town? Like, do you volunteer? Like, all that kind of stuff. So that would be great. Sure. You might if I start by saying thank you to Sue. I mean, we wouldn't be, can there wouldn't be the candidates here running if it wasn't for Sue Swankowski, who's been amazing over the years. So I want to thank her and um, also the entire board, the current board that puts in their time and Dr. Gonzalez and the community. So, and the other candidates. So I know it's a running and it's, seems kind of political, but really at the heart of it, I just want to emphasize it. We're all one team. We're all one Westwood. So I appreciate all the other candidates and do. I wish that I wish them well. Um, Chief Pontillo, Angela Peck, and Gail. Uh, I think it's outstanding that in a community like this, we have four members running for one seat. And mm -hmm. I know we all have 10, right? So we might have difference of opinions and stuff, but I really appreciate that. I think that says a lot for our community too. No, absolutely. Absolutely. So how long have you lived in town and, and all of that, Jay? Like, just give us some of your background. Sure. I lived in town. We moved my wife, Megan, and my daughter, Lila. Uh, we moved in town five years ago, going on six years right now from Bogle. Mm -hmm. uh, I actually am familiar with Westwood, though, because I had my grandmother and aunts and cousins um, all grew up here. So I spent a lot of uh, all my holidays here on Summit Ave. We own three houses over on Summit Ave. Okay. Very familiar with it. Um, yeah. It actually played an intricate role in, in why we chose Westwood out of Hoboken, um, mm -hmm. as, well as, the, as well as the school district. Yeah. That's really, really important. Uh, so we've been here for six years. As soon as I came here, it was important. Over for 25 years, I've been, since I was a kid, I always understood the value of giving back. I am who I am now and will be forever. Thankful to the people that have mentors, coaches, teachers, mm. board and members who I look up to now, council members. Um, it's really, I believe, you know, it takes a village to raise a child. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Very thankful to them. So, Great. Yeah. All right. Awesome. Um, so one of the other questions that I have here, again, just to kind of give some perspective is, um, you know, you've got a family, you've lived here five or six years. I think people might be curious as, you know, what is your why, Jay? Like, why are you wanting to do this? What's important to you? And maybe give some of that perspective. Yeah. Again, it kind of oh, it tails off of what I just said. It's about giving back. I, I've always understood. Uh, it's important to give back. 
Um, there's a power and a purpose greater than me and myself. And if I can just be a part of that, I'm not, I'm, I've never been the person to kind of be a spectator with things. So, like I said, as we look through all the rankings and all these, all these things that made a, uh, Westwood, our decision, our choice to come here, um, again, the school district and the board of ed, all that was important to me. So, you know, when I saw this opportunity, as soon as I came or as soon as we came to Westwood, it was important for me to get involved. So immediately, one of the first things I did, I went down to the, to the rec center and I talked to Gary and Roberta. That's where I met Roberta, who's on the board right now. And mm-hmm. told I had 25 years of working with kids, boys and girls clubs, big brother, big sisters, just mentor role shift and just anything, you know, w- w- anything I can volunteer and work with kids. I, honestly, it's kind of selfish because everybody says, thank you. And you're such a good guy and this and that. And I get so much more from them than they get from me. Right. Um, it gives you energy, right? Oh, it gives me energy. And like, yeah. I said, paying it back, getting, getting outside yourself and giving back makes me feel whole. And, and I know I owe it. Right. Uh, any community that I'm in, but I love Westwood wholeheartedly. So, um, so I did that and, and I, started volunteering and actually did work for at the teen center Mm -hmm. um, or the Westwood community center teen night. Okay. Half years. I also, I have um, another intricate or another reason why we chose Westwood is because I do have cousins that already live here. Um, One of them is 13 and um, sports have been an important part of my life. I think they're really important. People kind of thought I was cheesy. I think when I first came on board, because I was, you know, Life lessons through sports is my big motto. You know, if we can go and trials and yeah. tribulations on the baseball, football, basketball, soccer field, we can get some of those real world experiences through sport. And then ultimately it's just a game, but mm-hmm. it, plays out, it plays out in real life, you know? You're, Absolutely. It does. Absolutely. Just like those sort of things. So, so I've done, I've coached football, basketball, baseball. It started with my, my cousin because he played those sports, but then, uh, he stopped playing football. I continued on. They had a great season. We had a great season last year. Yeah. Um, undefeated, 12 and 0, first time Super Bowl champion. Okay. <laughs> Go Wolves. <Woo>! Right. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. That's your question. Yeah. About the why, but. Yeah. So you really have a, a want and a need to kind of help the community, and, and you really were getting involved and wanting to be involved, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Awesome. Um, so let's talk a little bit about the board of ed position if we could, right? Just some of the qualities and that kind of stuff. So, um, you know, maybe if you could just tell us a little bit about, um, your background and what are some of those qualities that you think can help in this role if you were to get the uh, position? Yeah, I think one of the biggest things in in terms of a board of ed is the understanding whatever candidate or whatever person fills that seat, it's one of nine, right? And it's, I've always been told I have a lot of friends superintendents across the country, um, people that I've worked with in the past uh, in my volunteership with the Boys and Girls Club. It's very, you know, it, it was important to kind of tie into the community because we always understood that there's the family, there's the school, and then there's after school activities, right? So there's really mm-hmm. child's overall daily um, routine or, or whatever schedule. So I always talk to them and everybody says the same thing about the Board of Ed, that it's important, that it's um it's representative of the community and really that its job is to not run a district, but help make sure the district is run well. Mm-hmm. So, and it's, and you're one of nine. So important to me, I don't profess and I won't come on here and say, I have all these answers and I'm going to get this done and I'm going to do that. What I can say is I think it's really, really important to be part of a team to work collaboratively. That's a big word that I've been, you know, that, that I'm emphasizing over and over again, mm-hmm. to work collaboratively with the team. We're not always going to agree. It's no right. different else but then my work and everything but um and, and i've always been that way in that i bring people together uh even i, I don't necessarily have all the answers like i said I, I don't profess to but what i do stand behind is that um i listen yeah i listen and i understand different perspectives and i can change my opinion if given you know the the, the right evidence base you know mm-hmm. I can change my thought frame and, and i think yeah. that I could also understand as one of nine and would understand as one of nine, if it didn't go what I, I mean, I, w- I would vote uh, with integrity and always honor and with, with good intent. And I understand that I'm not always going to be right. So mm-hmm. if I'm one person in the minority in there and there was a decision made, I trust everybody on that board. They're all great individuals. We can argue and, and say this and that and make it political, but really we're all together and we have one goal to make this right. one, one, one. Sorry. 
focal yeah yeah you broke up a Are little you there? Bit there okay you, you froze a little bit <laughs> all right we gotta love technology right yeah. you're yeah. back though did i answer your question though if i didn't no absolutely i think you definitely did and by the way um if anyone does have a question i can also see if someone is posting something so uh, you're getting a couple of vote for jay garcia like so i'm seeing some of that here as well so okay. you mo i don't think you can see it but i can see it um so if there's any questions that do pop up i will um you know provide those to you as we go through so so thanks for right. answering that yeah well thanks for that just vote i appreciate yeah. your vote right some good absolutely absolutely so um, let's talk a little bit about some of the progress that's been made. You know, in researching this, um, some of the questions and and getting on the Google and just figuring things out and what's been happening with uh, within the district and stuff. Um, a lot of progress has been made. And I'm just curious, you know, for your thoughts, you know, what do you recognize as some of the accomplishments? And is there anything that you think that you can continue to try to work toward uh, to further improve if possible? Yeah, I mean, and I'll just, I'll actually defer to, to the website, the Westwood Regional um, School District. It shows the goals that have been met and it shows the strategy. So that's one of the things as I started, I guess, running and being interested in, in actively running for this is I've realized there are so many resources and I could sit here. I'm actually looking off to the corner here because I'm looking. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> and there's so many things here. I think the, what you show here is the emphasis um, from what I understand. You know, um, and there's a lot of data. I do believe the academics has improved. I believe some the rankings have improved. If you look at the website, um, and this is where I'd say I don't have a platform, I don't have an agenda, but what I do truly feel is is important is um, the overall the wholeness of our education system or for the kids. So it's very easy, and and this the way to um, kind of quantify is like the rankings, right? So it's easy to say SATs did they go up because there's a number next to it, right? grades of uh, schools whatever but i think well-being and overall wholeness of the of the children of the students is important and that's a little bit harder to put a number next to but what i can say is i, I noticed and i'm happy to see that a lot of resources are going to that um, okay and to that to overall development of it but yeah i do believe um as i said sports are important to me and i've been pretty successful in soccer field football um that's all part of it. And back to what I'm saying about I've been part of teams like that. And I think that experience will also hold well for me um, being part of a team with the board of ed. So, okay, great. I'm also, proud the, you know, the, the, the middle school, that being passed was huge. Yeah, that was, there was a lot of that, right? A lot yeah. about that. So, yep, yeah, that was a good thing, right? Yeah, and that's the community. That's not mm -hmm. the board of ed or, or, I mean, that's the people have spoken about. <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. That's the way it should be. So. <laughs> So I actually have a question here, if you don't mind. Um, and it's actually one of the questions that I had on here, but it comes from Andrea Nicole. Um, it, what do you want to change about the current BOE? Is there anything that kind of comes to mind with that? Well, first, I want to say I do truly stand by that everybody on that board and the administration has their hearts and the right intent, right? We're not, right. It's easy to point out what people are doing wrong. Um, what, what I'd like to, I don't necessarily change. I'd like to see us be less divisive. And that's mm. what really pushed me to actually run here. Because like I said, great resumes by all the candidates. What I stand behind is let's do this together, right? So I think that I'd like to see that as a mm -hmm. whole. Um, I think communication, I think communication, what I have, I've been went to most of the board meetings last year. And what I saw there was, I think some people in the public felt like they weren't being heard or listened to. Okay. Now, and I don't know all the bylaws and I don't understand all the regulations, which I would defer once again to. To Dr. Gonzalez and the board, they they do. Mm -hmm. right? So I'm sure they're very smart people and they know the ins and outs of it. So they're doing up to the standard of what they what they should be doing. I'm sure. Mm -hmm. um, but I'd like to see not just not because you have to, but because you'd like to give people kind of a voice and really understanding. And I think um, words words are powerful, right? We're going to have to try. And that's what I also want to stand by. Um, you know, these slogans and these pitches and these these um, what are we going to say about the candidates? I have to admit, I agree with all of them. Mm -hmm. Big concern, transparency is a big concern, but I think it's important to say just because that's what we stand behind doesn't mean it's not that now. Right. So what I will say is in terms of transparency, I don't think it means they're not being transparent, they're hiding things. I think the, the kind of why behind what has happened or, or what we decide on is important. And again, I don't know if that's allowable. I understand yeah. things that are behind the scenes, I wouldn't know that until I was on the board, right? 
but I think that's what I would like. I think that's what I would make more. Um, I guess if you'd say change, but I wouldn't make that change, but I would emphasize it. And I, as a parent, that's what I've been saying this whole time. Like, I, as a parent, I mean, I'm a parent first, right? Mm -hmm. you know, before I'm a candidate or board of ed member. So I know me personally, I went to a couple and I wondered why, and, and I'm just kind of a leap of faith that they were doing things, but I'd like to kind of open up more dialogue behind the reasoning. Okay. So why, why do you think that that's important, whether it's, it's communication, whether it's just transparency, right? I've, I've seen some of those terms. So why, why is that important to just to residents um, who are part of this? Like, why do you think that's so key and critical? Well, I mean, first of all, board of education and the school system is, is probably the most important mm -hmm. element to, and that's with all the stakeholders, right? Tax, yeah. You know, your taxes go to that, your property value goes up with the, with better the schools are, people more fluent, they want to come into the community. Um, but people, I think, like I said, people have different ideas and difference of, differences of opinions. Yeah. They're not getting, or they don't think that they've been listened to or heard I think they just want to know why at least, right? I mean, some people are just, if they don't get their way, they're just not going to be happy. I yeah. think most of us understand if a decision's made, just let us kind of know what the what the thought behind it. And back to that. Right, like give some of the rationale, right? Yeah, the rationale behind it. Mm -hmm. And then from there, whether you agree or not, I mean, that's up for, I guess that's up to each individual person, but. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yep, totally does. Okay. Um, can we go into the kind of the safety uh, space a little bit? Um, this, like I said at the beginning of this, this has really been kind of a challenging year for obvious reasons. Yeah. Uh, we're all impacted so differently. Um, and when it comes to safety, um, I think that there's a concern that's out there. I have a couple of friends who've got some kids that are in the district. And um, you know, they, they were telling me how good a job when it comes to communication, but also you know, the safety aspect of the virus, I mean, let's just put it all out there, right? We know what's going on. So, um, you know, how do you think that, how, how can this position kind of help move that forward, do you think, in regards to safety and just reassuring parents and residents and, and staff members, et cetera, that, you know, sa should safety, how, how, how can this role kind of help in that safety space, do you think? When you say, what, what do you mean, how can this role help in that? Well, so this position, right? So you getting this and the board working together when it comes to safety, how, how, is there more that can be done, do you think? Or you know, what, what are your thoughts around that? Well, I think it's interesting you say that because when, when I first heard about safety, right, that can mean different things to different people. Sure. That school safety. Right. right. A bunch of different directions. But since you said COVID, and that's why I laughed, certainly not a funny thing. But no, right. I know what you mean. Let's throw it out there. Right, because right. you're absolutely right. It could go in various um, thought processes for people when it comes yeah. to safety. Yeah. And so what, what I'll say is that's even it's right. We can get in here and talk for hours and different, different people have different opinions and different stances on the virus itself. You know, what we can do differently. So one answer won't fit all right. It's yeah. Not happy. But I will say, and this is what I went, well, I'll go back to what I said before is I don't have an answer into how to do things properly. You know, what we do have is we are so blessed in this community. We're in Bergen County. We're in Westwood. We have Meridian health here. We have, again, back to Chief Pontillo, outstanding job keeping our community safe. What he's mm -hmm. done with the outreach is outstanding. Great job there. So I trust him and I trust the professionals at Marion Health. They're the experts. And I think right. what we need to do. So enough with like, I'm not going to come in and all of a sudden I have my ideas. That's fine. But why don't we defer to the professionals? Why don't we defer to the experts who do this for a living? Right. And I have my experience. I like to be safe. <laughs> you know, we all do. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So we defer to them once it's a um, data driven analysis and review of, of what their um, recommendations are or what their guidance is and mm -hmm. go from there. And then we discuss it as a board and I will, I, will, I mean, I'm in the medical industry in terms of, I work for a company that's weird diagnostics. So I kind of have seen this throughout my, you know, the last seven months, how different people and I work with folks at Columbia, Presbyterian, Yale, UPenn, Harvard. So right. some guys, and I'll tell you what, they don't even all agree, right? So, yeah. that, so in terms of the role and what that can do, it's a matter of getting all the data, all the information and determining there together with the community. And then it's really up to the, it's up to the parents to determine what's the safest route to go. What makes the most children. sense for them, right? Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. 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 So options and then figure that out. But what's most important from your family's perspective? Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That's an individual decision. I think that's what we have to uh, um, give a lot of credit to districts across the country. 
but definitely Westwood to provide yeah. different options. Yeah. Yeah, and there's you know there's been such flex and and um, you know a lot of communication I guess and news stories about you know just trying to pivot because this is all new to everybody, right? So and we're still trying to work through it all. And is there a right answer? Not necessarily, but you've got to kind of balance work life with family life and teaching. And do the kids go in school? Like how? It's a lot to contend with, right? Yeah. Yeah. I can say if I can just point out one thing. I was at the board of ed meeting. It was a Thursday before the Friday the shutdown. We're sitting there, we're listening. An alert came across on the phones. We all got it, all right? And this is a credit to the to, to the Board of Ed and all mm -hmm. the press that came into it. And I'm not mentioning any other district's names, but I do have friends and cousins and family that were other places, so I can tell you how that went down. But okay. <laughs> Dr. Gonzalez said, I have to step away for a second. He got up to take care of something. He walked out of the room. The meeting continued. And an hour later, it seemed like everything was ready. We, there was the plan that it was, had been worked on and that mm -hmm. put in place the next day. So that was a Thursday, Friday, we all knew, uh, came in, the kids got their stuff that they needed, Chromebooks were allocated, you know, and by Monday, I think things were moving, if, if I'm correct. Mm -hmm. Where I had one of the districts, literally, my family members that, that are teachers that said, we got a call and said, hey, everybody take, we're taking a snow day, we got to figure this out. So right. credit to the credit to the board and Dr. Gonzalez and just... Yeah, I have a friend who um, she said that and just the communication was instantaneous. Right. And it continues to be, yeah. um, which is is um, is good. <laughs> right? right. I mean, it's important because she's like, oh, I just got an email from the principal of my my daughter's school. So she's getting a lot of updates um, and kind of working along with the pivot that's happening. So that's great. Yeah. OK, good. Um, any other issues that you think are facing the regional district right now? Is there like one issue that kind of comes to mind that you think that should be kind of a focus for the board moving forward at all? No, I'd say if you, I mean, <clears throat> an issue. Not I, I, maybe issues the wrong word, but like, what are what is kind of the next thing that maybe should be a focus area? Do you think? I don't want to speak out of line, and I don't want to make something up just to just to create an issue. Mm -hmm. But I said and at the board meetings and why I'm here is I think my biggest issue would be, again, the combativeness or divisiveness that I've seen. And I think we all have to get together. So honestly, that's the issue. And okay. One, I think we all need to, to calm down a little bit. I mean, to get together and look each other in the eye and say, you're not my enemy, right? Like, right. like let's, let's stop that. We, we're also trying to set forth the, the proper, um, we're supposed to show our kids how we, how we're treated, uh, mm -hmm. how we treat people right mm -hmm. i think that you know either finger pointing or knocking people's character that that needs to stop and mm -hmm. especially if a board of ed it, it shouldn't be political to the point where there's some sort of uh, you know um i don't know some stoppage in talking because somebody's offended or thinks this other person's that you know it's i say it just similar to kind of what we do in the coaching right we're, we're wreck right so focus on the goal playing right and then the next you know the next week you're an all-star team like we're westwood we mm -hmm. all want same thing. Mm -hmm. Better, the best for our children. So that's what I—that's what I would change, if anything. Right. So just continue to work on that, right? Yeah. Kind of get them all, everyone together, talking and yeah, collaborative. And once there's a trust there, then we can really hash out some things. That, and, and again, I'm not going to make something up. I'm sure there are things we can improve on. Absolutely, as human mm -hmm. beings, as a district, as board of ed, everything. Yeah. So let's sit down and talk about it. No, right. Life is continuous improvement, right? <laughs> it really is. <laughs> It's constant. So, um, but this is an important aspect to consider, obviously. So um, let's see what, the, you know, I have a question here about um, working with budget a little bit and, um, you know, in this role or being part of the board, um, you know, how, is there a way to kind of prioritize what's needed within the district for students or what, or whomever, right? Whatever the, the item might be versus kind of managing the budget itself. Like, do you have any insight into that yet? Like, or, you know, how would you actually manage or how does the board kind of manage that? Is that a possibility for improvement, right? So you're looking at learning styles, you're learning at what kids might need, what, um, you know, folks in our schools might need versus what's available for a budget and kind of staying within that budget. I don't know if my question makes sense, but well, really I, just getting into budget here. So, yeah, well, I think <laughs> that, dang it, it's no different really than, than a household. Yeah. Thing. And so I think you kind of have to look at that from the start of what you said, right? First, it's the it's the um, strategy that we put forth. 
that dictates and we all determine and agree. And I think the, the map for success was put forth uh, a couple of years ago that we're still on those strategies and goals. And so that determines mm-hmm. really what the priorities are, right? And then from there, just like a household, what do you need? What is the priority? And go from there. So it's not a matter of, and that's where you allocate your resources. And that's going to differ, I guess, as you go or strive towards those goals. But I think where there's a need, that's where we can divert some of the money. And that's, that's um, you know, I don't have a full grasp on, on how much of the, the, how much the community actually voices heard versus the professionals that might know right. a little more. I don't understand fully what goes in behind the, the total rankings and, and those things. But I think we get together. Right. So how are things prioritized and how does that come into play? Right. Yeah. If there's a need. I hope we would meet that need. You know, yeah. That need. So. Yeah. And I think that gets back to the collaboration. Right. And so you're gaining understanding and you want a voice to kind of help contribute to move things forward, whatever those items might be. Right. Absolutely. But I guess the answer and to be transparent with that, I don't know. I'm not. Yeah. Bottom line. Yet. I haven't yet. And then even though if I did have all those, that information and data, it would still be my opinion, right? Until I get in front of other people, I can mm-hmm. still, I think money should go here. I think money should go there. My opinion, just for me, without listening to everybody else and seeing what the community needs, it'd be, it'd be a selfish endeavor at that point. Right. No, absolutely. So you need that input to kind of help that process. Yep, absolutely. Okay. Um, one other question I have here is just about... Um, accountability, I guess, right? And so we've been talking about um, just whether it's the divisiveness or whatever that's been going on, but um, kind of showing transparency, you know, the board showing that transparency, et cetera. Part of that to me feels like it might be accountability as well and holding yourself accountable or holding decisions accountable. So I'm curious, like what, what does account, what does the word accountability mean to you? And why is that important in this seat position, do you think? Okay, I'm going to take that in kind of two different questions. Yeah. Perspective of it's when you're telling somebody or you're stating that somebody's not being accountable is different than the question that you're actually asking me. So what does accountability mean to me? Yeah. Once again, it's not just board of ed stuff. It's human beings. It's what we're teaching our kids on, on, the, on the fields, in the classroom, in our homes, right? It's accountability to me means owning your decisions, owning up to your choices, right? Um, mm-hmm. And just taking ownership into the things that you've done. Um, So I think from there, I think it's easy to be accountable. Uh, Listen, once you make a decision determination or in this, uh, uh, if I were to make a vote and then to say, be accountable to that, I think it's easy to be accountable, even though it's not going to be the right decisions and hindsight is 2020. But when you have the best of intent, things when you act with integrity, when you do it for the purpose of the, you know, all the stakeholders in the community, not just your own, selfish needs and then you do that um with all the data and analysis and an effort or communal effort once you make that decision i think it's easy to be accountable Mm -hmm. um because then you don't second guess yourself right right even if it was a quote-unquote wrong decision you look back and said with the information that i had with the collaboration that we used with the needs that we thought we had we made this choice things can change certainly we've learned that Mm -hmm. right Mm -hmm. absolutely but I think that will allow me to be, you know, easily accountable to at least my choices or decisions or, or vote. Mm-hmm. Okay, great. Very good. Thank you. Um, so I guess, you know, what, is there anything else that you'd kind of want to bring up? I mean, I was thinking a half hour to an hour really kind of depends on where the conversation goes. But, um, you know, actually, um, I, I think we've kind of gone through basically all the questions that I thought of. But anything you probably maybe just want to leave residents with any final thoughts or something that we didn't talk about that you'd like to talk about i I want to thank them the support's been amazing i just want to encourage Mm -hmm. people like not to sound corny but let's get along let's move forward together right Mm -hmm. that's absolutely i think that's important just like a family that we sit there and we can argue and hash things out understand and trust the other person's intent leave all the other stuff behind right this shouldn't be it's the board of ed, right? I know things are political and I don't want to be, I don't think, you know, pie in the sky type of guy, but really let's just get together and let's make the best decisions for, for our community. And as I said, I couldn't be more sincere. Uh, I'm, I'm happy and proud to run, run mm-hmm. uh, three absolutely, you know, uh, candidates that would probably do a great job. So I might be the anti-candidate or I'm still- <laughs> Vote for Jay Garcia. <laughs> you know what I can promise and what I guarantee. If you do vote for me and I get that board of ed, 
I'm going to stand next to, to Chief Pontillo. I'm going to stand next to, to Gail and Andrea, and we're going to move forward. They have great ideas. They've shown, right? That's the thing. The, the sum of our parts, I mean, all together are stronger, more powerful than each individual idea. So let's, let's steal from each other, right? Let's right. Steal all the good ideas, put them together, mix them up, and figure out what the best... Um, best choice or direction. You know, and I, that just reminds me of something. I used to be in corporate before I became a real estate agent. And we used to have a phrase, steal with, steal with passion, use with pride. <laughs> and yeah. it's right. So if there's a good idea that's out there and it's still benefiting whatever our group was doing at the time and Hey, this one's doing this. It's still to move something forward. Right. Yeah. At the end of the day. So. That's, that's really all I'd say. Like I said, I've talked to each of the other candidates. They have great ideas. Yeah. Make this a competitive thing of if, if you know whoever loses whatever let's no matter what happens vote with your heart vote with your mind <clears throat> and then let's keep all the things and all the um i guess if somebody else has a platform an agenda you know safety transparency responsibility i think uh, exactly what chief pontillo's is but all great things yeah yes, synergy you know you whatever it was for gales you know Andrea has take, take, let's take all these ideas it's not that somebody's going to win and then all those ideas are garbage Right. And all those goals are going They all contribute, right? They all contribute. Right. Mm -hmm. Let's trust each other a little bit more and move forward. That that's my hope. That's what I leave everybody. And but if I was elected, I would serve honorably, with pride, with integrity. And you know, everybody I would hear for the entire every stakeholder, not just my daughter. You notice I never said anything. Now now I'll tell you. I have a five year old, I have one five year old and I have a couple of cousins and there's it's not about her. It's mm -hmm. not about selfish need that my daughter and she's you know, she's a kindergartner and I'm gonna be here. I'll be here for the next 30 years, hopefully. <laughs> right, right. But um, it's not about her. It's about what's better, what's best for the whole community. And I yeah. promise I'm elected. That's exactly where my votes will go. And I'll mm -hmm. always have everybody in the community will have, a, will have an ear um, and a voice. Yeah. Okay, great. All right. All right, Jay, I think uh, anything else you want to say? I think we're, we're on our, uh, the end of our time here, but... Anything else? I think you're good to go, but you tell me. <laughs> this is all about you. <laughs> You've been great. And again, thanks to everybody, the, the other candidates. I already thanked them, but um, Jody Murphy and Tony Ann. Um, won't butcher her last name, but Gloria. Migliore. Migliore. <laughs> Let's um, make it Italian. Migliore. Yeah, there you mm -hmm. go. But mm -hmm. anyway, no, thanks to just everybody in the community and just, you know, um, good luck to the other candidates. Just everybody, like I said, let's, let's move forward and together. And whether I'm on the board or not, I'm going to be here and I'm going to be trying to make the best decisions. I'm going to be offering my opinion, thoughts, and um, trying to bring everybody together regardless. So thanks for the opportunity, Bob. Great. Thank you, Jay. It was really nice talking to you. I really appreciate it. And uh, good luck to you. Thanks. And um, yeah, I'll see you in town. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Take care. Thanks.